Yeah, yeah Coach, how are you all help? How are you all help wise out the game? We uh, yeah, um, they were leaving uh, and, uh, the, the Williams injury. Uh, you know, obviously Damian will continue to evaluate him, uh, see what it looks like. He did come back into the game. Otherwise, um, you know, there's obviously guys that are that are sore. He's played an NFL game, but we're pretty pretty clean otherwise. kind of the end of that last quarter and, and mm -hmm. some of those decisions, whether it was the fourth and one or, or some maybe some of the defensive calls, what, what stood out that maybe either you would have done differently or, or that you're where you think, I think it broke down? Well, I think whether you win or lose, Mike, the biggest challenge is to be in a, if you really want to improve and you have the right mindset, is you've got to be objective and be honest. And it'll always start with me. What can I do better? There's certainly things every week that I can do better. and. and so you don't make the same mistakes or there's something you see that say, hey, we can improve on. I think the worst thing you can do is be defensive and uh, not be able to look at things objectively. So that's always going to start with me, how we look at it. Um, we certainly stayed aggressive, and you got to give New Orleans credit. They made plays, and some of their veterans, they made plays. Well, we stayed aggressive. We mixed in calls. We stayed aggressive on offense. Um, and we certainly stayed aggressive on defense. And they made plays, and we got things we can clean up leverage-wise or uh, maybe we didn't get home here or there, and uh, and that's what the game came down to. They made one more play than we did late, and we'll continue to improve. And that, that's that's the thing. You know, week one, been a part of. You know, you go out there and you blast a playoff team and think that you, you got something, and we won one more game in 2014. Very similar in 2015. So we know we got to improve. Uh, obviously, not not happy about the end result, but there was a lot of progress and a lot of good that come out came out of that game. What are some of the takeaways for you from that game? Uh, you know, which way? You know, positives or things that are critical? Um, we can go both. We want to start. We'll see, uh, how, you, see how you're But you want them to keep their heads up, the pass rush. I got my little sure. list, but, yeah. I, you know, they don't. They want your list. They don't want my Well, I just want to make sure you're answering the question, you know, what, you, what you're looking for here. So, obviously, the positives, I thought, the lines at scrimmage, I thought we played pretty well for the most part. Wasn't perfect, but you run the ball, you know, 38 times for 200 yards, give you a chance most weeks. I thought we kept Marcus pretty clean. Uh, I thought we did a good job staying in rhythm offensively for the most part and uh, just kept changing things up. So pleased there. Um, not pleased is, you know, where, where the game come, usually comes down to in the NFL, especially against a good team. Is situational. You know, you, you turn the ball over in the red zone, you have a penalty down there. Uh, we, we'll get those, that stuff cleaned up. Yeah, my name's a, I, I got a bunch of questions about Pitts after the game. But I saw he had seven targets. Yeah, we targeted him. Yeah. yeah so if you run the ball 38 times, you know, we, we, we held on the ball. I think we had over 400 yards of offense. It's not going to, you know, I think that's what, there's a lot of different ways to play, right? There's a lot of, you know, there's a certain, there's certain way we play offense. Uh, and certainly other teams play it a different way. It may be, you know, aesthetically more spread out and you it may be a little more drop back heavy and and, and try to look all pretty with passing stats. Uh, we're just trying to win the game. He affects the game. I think the one thing that was very encouraging, and I think Kyle is not just lip service in one of these preseason stories, he blocked really well yesterday. And we're certainly gonna target Kyle, but we also have other good players. So if you want to take him away, I was very encouraged by what I saw about Drake. Uh, you know, I thought OZ made some good plays. And Hodge will continue to to look to improve and get get everybody involved in the offense. But Kyle had a huge impact on the game. Going back to what you were talking about a little bit before, when you were talking about Marcus, he had said after the game that he didn't necessarily realize where he was on the on the red zone fumble. Is that something that's coachable, or is yeah, that something that he just needs so to? Here's a perfect example of that. So obviously, the way he pressed it, again, I mean, it wasn't by him not trying to make a play. I mean, it, you know, it's things you can coach. I always say this, you rather have guys you, you can pull back than guys you got to make go. And Marcus did everything he could to try to win the game. Obviously, no different than OZ. And we got to be better with the ball, no doubt about it. But when he's, when he's got out of there, got out of the pocket, which, which he proved he can hurt people with in different ways too. Some design, some just, you know, if they're going to drop back and sink, he can, he can extend it. And he certainly did. And then what, when he cut up, that's what he's talking about. When to slide if he's already there. When you press the sideline, there's a play that actually, you're talking about the effect Kyle had. The next series, get in there, 
change some things up. And um, we got a hold on first down. I believe it was first and 20. And Kyle ran a pretty good route. He got the penalty, you know, the way he, the way he set the guy up on the route, which we got the penalty. But Marcus also pushed it all the way to the sideline. So that was a good in-game adjustment. Something happened. We tried to correct it. And um, obviously, we took the penalty there. But that if you go back and watch that, you'll see what I'm talking about. When, when you go to the offensive line, like you said, and they kept Marcus quickly in those sacks. How much of that was schematically what you were trying to do versus them really maybe being more physical up front? I think both. Not only from a situational standpoint, do you talk to him from a situational and health standpoint about sliding more? Absolutely. Okay. And it's, as I said, I mean, it, trust me, I mean, he, and he did at times. And then he gets in there and critical third and three. I mean, I can't fault the guy's trying to win. And he went in there and put his foot in the ground. He's not scared. But yes, you want to, you know, there's only been around him enough, been around this league enough to understand that a lot of fast guys out there and their, their intent is, and that's football. So we'll continue to, to evolve and be smart with it. But, it's hard to fault him in that critical situation when he put his foot in the ground twice. One, he got in on third and three. The other one, he, you know, we were, we were a yard short and we weren't clean with the operation on third and one. Um, you know, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty. The way the game was going, playing the situation, uh, yeah, probably decision is probably different next time. So. As it pertains to the fourth quarter, you still possessed the ball for nine and a half minutes and all that stuff happened. I mean, it, it's got to be more than just execution or play calling, a combination of both. When you looked at the film, what did you see uh, from both ends, play calling and execution? Yeah, I, I mean, we, I did everything we could to stay aggressive but be smart. I mean, you don't want to be reckless and go, you know, go three and out and run 12 seconds off the clock. So you're trying to, to stay aggressive, being smart, giving yourself options, and I thought we did. You know, we certainly – we're not going to play in our fears and but not being reckless. So we were able to move the ball and, you know, we don't convert a third and three. And so we got a punt and, um, you know, we lose leverage on a play and they make a play and we stayed aggressive on the defense side. The same thing. I mean, we were playing our game plan. I mean, it wasn't all of a sudden we got into some umbrella prevent defense or we all of a sudden got into goal line and tried to hand off, you know, fullback dive three times. Um, but those critical situations were different, you know, not converting third and three, third and one. And then on the flip side, we had our opportunities and they made some big time plays. And you got to give Winston credit. He kept swinging, we got to him early, um, showed him some different looks. And, you know, Landry makes a play. Certainly Mike Thomas made some plays down the stretch. And um, that was the difference in the game. Offensively, do you feel like your team was able to establish the identity that you want to see from them throughout the season, especially on that offensive line where there was, you know, you said it, question marks and or three in the five spots were up to grab up for grabs in the beginning of camp, and they were up to, they were able to go out and dominate like they did. Yeah, certainly, we made a lot of progress. You know, um, you know, we, you're not obviously disappointed with the end result, but there is a lot of good in the progress. But the but the key is whether we had won that game, or we lost it. Can we make the improvement? You know, it's, it's probably easier to be critical after a loss than it is after you win. We certainly want to win. That's our objective every week. Uh, but please, very pleased for the most part how they played up front. And then in the backfield, Tyler Algier was kind of a surprise in active. Was he dealing with something physically? No, I, it, you just got to make those decisions. I mean, it gets down to the 48 and where you want to go heavy. And a lot of it comes down to special teams. So. You know, some weeks we maybe we'll have five running backs up, but when you have Avery and Keith who are good special teams players, you got to make that assessment. You know, where are you going to – I know 48 sounds like a lot, but when you're putting that puzzle together, um, you know, you're going to have your three specialists up. So it's really about getting to 45. And we felt like we wanted to go heavier more in the interior, in the D-line. Um, with the way the game plan was, we a little bit – went a little heavier tight end. And then Kyle ended up playing a significant number of snaps. Drake played more snaps, and uh, and that's a credit to Drake. I mean, the guy, you know, missed a couple of weeks, practiced pretty well, and he, you know he was rolling. And so we we kept him in there. And um, so some other guys we dressed didn't play as much as we anticipated, and it took away a little bit from the back. But we'll reassess that and 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 look to do you know once we put the plan in for uh, Sunday. Were you surprised with how good Drake looked just physically out there? No. Not coming? No. What's encouraging is when you do a lot of the work in the pre-draft, and uh, that's why you got to spend so much time on this. It'll never be perfect. There's always the things that come up, but 
we were pretty confident in the, in the player and the person we were getting and the mindset he has, and that was really encouraging. There's a lot of details and stuff that we can clean up, but it was encouraging, encouraging considering that he really hadn't practiced in a couple of weeks. Coach, after the game, obviously, it's, it's emotional. Uh, mm -hmm. You had mentioned two or three times what the media had said, preseason rankings and everything else. I mean, obviously, that has nothing to do with what happens on the field. No, it doesn't. Okay, so is that just an emotional response in that moment? or? Yeah, it's, you know, look, obviously, you're, you're frustrated when you lose, um, especially that type of game. Um, that wasn't an indictment on anybody in the crowd. It was more of a... And I could have certainly framed it differently, but it was more of like, hey, this team is has made progress and we're here to compete. And uh, yeah, it wasn't an indictment on the crowd. And yeah, I can be better. You talk about being objective, you know, don't let frustration and make some grand vague statement. That's really not m what my point. My point was more of this team has made a lot of progress. Uh, we finished games last year, ironically down in New Orleans and we got to clean up stuff in the fourth quarter, but it starts with me. And to that end, you, know, you focus so much on preparation for game one. You changed things the way you did in the preseason. What showed up on tape that you did well that you, you know, actually said, "Look, we're going to prepare this way." And yeah, I would think the well, the way we came out and, and played and established the lines of scrimmage. I mean, that's where you know we've made a made camp hard, I and mean, these guys got a lot of reps in, so they're ready to go. And uh, I certainly think that would have shown up. Um, now the flip side is we got to make more plays in the fourth quarter. And we got a chance to put the ball game away late in the third. Um, you know, as frustrated would have been to kick a field goal when you turn the ball over down there, you know, you look back and that's probably the difference, right? All right three more points at worst. And uh, those are the things we got to clean up. And it'll always come down to situational. I thought, here's another encouraging thing, you're ready to go. I thought we handled the end of the half really well. You know, we kicked a field goal. We were able to talk about playing in all three phases. And they, we knew they were getting the ball, they deferred. Uh, so we couldn't double them up, but we were able to end the half with a really good series by the defense. Avery got a decent return. Drake catches one going out the backside of the of the coverage. And then we hit Kyle, and there was no panic. It was something we work all the time. And that's to me, that's signs of progress of a good team understanding situational football. Um, clearly, in the fourth quarter, we'll continue to work and, and clean that up. You talked about, for months, really, about managing Cordero. And, mm -hmm. and his you know, reps and sure. practice. Was Sunday, the amount of carries he got, was that more due to Damian's injury or was there some part of it that you're just going to let him go? Well, I think that's what you that, – that's why, you know, there's so much preparation. There, and obviously it's, it's football, right? That's what makes it fascinating. There's so many games within the games. And when you're setting up things logistically with your game plan, and that's always a risk. I say it before, you know, one guy goes out, you have to be willing to adapt. So give and take. You know, he's not superhuman and touch the ball 65 times. Although, you know, I'm sure he'd tell you he'd want to. But so when you know you're going to be shorter back here, you may have to adapt and there's something you may take off in the passing game because that now he becomes the primary guy. And so that's to me, that's part of coaching. End game, what's your solution? It's all planned ahead of time. So if this if this happens, where do we go? And you got to have enough to be able to, to do that and you got to have the right players and coaches. And uh, that's what we did yesterday with him. He told, he told me after the game that ideally it's more a combination of him and Damian than, than what obviously we saw. Yeah, is, I mean, it, is, that, is it more of a balance than in Depends your on head? the game plan. Depends on the game plan. But, but your game plan, you had to, like that the example right there, you got to be willing to adapt. Damian couldn't go for most of the game. He tried to go back in there late on a situational uh, a play that was uh, a little nuanced that obviously we didn't, we didn't execute. But so you got to adapt. And, and so CP, and he ran really well. I mean, he ran as physical as I think I've ever seen him, the way he finished runs. Uh, and that was great to see. What would you tell the guys about turning the page? Yeah, I mean, it's, that's the thing on Mondays. You've got to be able to, to be objective and tell the truth. And I always say this, it always starts with me. You know, we're going to hold everybody accountable. I hold myself accountable. So whether you – I think the biggest lie in the NFL is the overreaction on Mondays. It is. And because um, a lot of times you win and you don't play really well, and it, you know you can rationalize a lot of things. You feel good, and then objectively, it's such a competitive league that if you don't take care of the details, the things that you know will come back around. If you don't clean them up on Monday, then shame on you. And so, um, so that's been the message. We we got to keep making progress. It's one game. Obviously, it's disappointing how it ended, but you got to give New Orleans credit. 
they got good players and good veterans, and they made plays down the stretch. We didn't, and we got to be better next time. But to let this something like that, when you lose, to sit there and say, you know, whoa, whoa, was me, or you act like a victim. None of us are victims. You get, we get to, I get to coach pro football. I got the best job in America. It's not lost to me. I, and it kind of sickens me when guys get up there and act like victims because they get criticized or whatever. No, I'm lucky as hell to be to be working for this franchise and coach football. And same with the players. And we'll have the right mindset and come back and get better. Coach, you did have Franks and, and Bernhard up. And sure, did. we had them. Say that again? Yeah, we had them up. Yeah, you had them up. What was the decision on that? Was it just looking to go heavy on uh, the team? Day? Yeah. Well, oh, I understand that. Yeah. They're, they're not, sometimes guys don't get in. Yeah. Again, you can dress 48, right? And it, a lot of times it, you make a decision, the guy may be a backup on – Special teams, he may be your fifth wideout. So that's why you go with him, because of the depth in certain areas. And if he plays a lot, then, like, if we had a receiver goes down, uh, go down, then obviously Bernie would have had to go in there a little bit more. Uh, Felipe with some of the other stuff that we had um, in the plan. But that's that was the decision. So will it be the same next week? We'll see when, you know, by Wednesday and late in the week once we got the plan in. Yeah, just wanted to check on how Richie Grant uh, showed up on film in his first uh, start. I thought you right could there. feel Richie. I thought uh, one thing, you know, obviously we had to plug and play different guys at, in that uh, slot nickel corner spot last year, and I thought you saw Richie's versatility at times. I thought he covered pretty well when he had to go down there, um, which was an improvement from last year. But you can feel Richie. I thought uh, played fast. I think Hawk too, like all of us. It wasn't perfect, but I thought Hawk and Richie you could feel. And just looking ahead now to the Rams, uh, uh, what will be some of the you know early uh, preparation things as you get ready for them? Yeah, they, they've obviously got to jump on us, right? They played Thursday night, um, so we we, we got to make sure we're ready to roll. I know Sean will have that team ready to go. They'll be focused in. We'll get their we'll get the LA Rams best shot, and that's what you want. You want to play the best, and um, and you want to, you want them to be at their best. That's the competition, and. So we know we got a challenge. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure Sean will have those guys ready to go. You know, they'll they'll they'll, they'll be out. I'm sure, they'll probably try to break out no huddle, and they may play a more man. Uh, they got good players and good coaches. Speaking of coverage, real quick, were you surprised how much they went after Michael with AJ on him as well as he had him for the most part in the stretch in the fourth quarter? Did you see anything on tape where AJ? Yeah, I mean, it, it, a lot of it's where the ball were going to have to go. He was going to have to get that ball up and down based on our call. And they'll take that matchup, and AJ will be better for it. There's two really good players going at it. And uh, hell, the first one, I mean, he, he just ripped that thing into the helmet. And you look back, and ball goes through it. And Mike Thomas is a good player. And he, he's make, he made the play. It only make AJ better. We got all the faith in the world in AJ. But that's a competition in the NFL. I mean, that's what obviously didn't go the way we wanted. But that's probably what the fans pay to see, see uh, good players go compete.